Hello, I'm Lam. Welcome or welcome back to Keeping Up with the Queen. Today, I am going to give you the update on the best, the bad, and everything in between for my recently purchased palettes. I can't believe how many things I have purchased recently. I have reviews for all of these products on my channel, which is insane. And as promised, I'm going to give you updates on them, whether I regret buying them. And yeah, let's get started. I'm going to give you very quick rundowns of things and then we are going to go on our merry way. So let's get started. First of all, I do want to talk about a brand that I have mixed feelings about, which is Huda Beauty. One I extremely enjoy and one I don't enjoy so much. I will talk about this chocolate brown palette first. Nine pan palette. It looks beautiful. It's very monochromatic in a way. Everything is complementary of each other. All of these shimmer shades are hard pan for some reason. So they are not picking up well after just a first use and I don't understand that. I can still kind of use it by scraping out the top layer and then I can get the pigment again every time. With the amount of palettes I have, I don't really want to reach for it all that much. So I would say I regret buying this, but everything was made up after I got this Jaguar palette. This is brand new and look at this color story. It is deep, it is dynamic, versatile, beautiful. None of the shimmers have the same problems at this palette. So maybe I have a dud, a, a bad batch or something in this one. I don't know. But I'm glad that I picked this one up because it's really changed my mind on Huda Beauty. I like their message. I like how thoughtful they are with their formulas and palettes and I like the price. The quality improves so hey I'm going to continue to give them more chances in the future. Pat McGrath Labs this is the luxury and one palette I kind of regret getting is this Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. I barely use it. It's just a lot for me and there's not really any neutrals in here and it's a specific look like it's an intense look so I don't find myself reaching for it all that much. Look at this color, look at that shift. Because I didn't get the Divine Rose 2 palette, so this is kind of my way of getting that crazy dual chrome without spending $125. So I am going to hold on to it and I'm going to use it on specific occasion. But that's the thing. With palettes that have like limited amount of occasions I can use them for. I don't reach for them all that, that much. Another palette that actually I love and I think everyone needs this one in their collection is of course Divine Rose 1. Look at this color range. It has all the roses you can ask for. Always with the bigger Mothership palettes, the last four are the unique shades. In this case, they are beautiful, but they are not too much. So they're still very wearable. The entire palette is pretty mild compared to the rest of the Pat, uh, Pat McGrath lines, and I really like this one. If you are a neutral lover and you want your first Pat McGrath Mothership palette, this one is the one to go. I would say this one or the Bronze Seduction but this one is even more neutral than that one because everything is softer. Color pop. Now we're going everywhere. Now we're going drugstore. Recently, I have purchased this one. Let's talk about the Wild Child and Going Coconut. So Wild Child is a big hit for me. It's kind of similar to this chocolate brown obsession palette from Huda Beauty in a way. It also has nine shades. None of them is forming hard pan. There is a glitter, a pressed glitter in the middle though, so just know that. Pigmented and warm and beautiful and blendable, the quality is stunning. I wouldn't know this is drugstore. For the Going Coconut, I heard a lot of buzz about this palette and it's a lot of people's favorites. Because I think I compare it with the Wild Child, it's very lackluster. It's not, it doesn't have the depth that works for my light medium skin. It's kind of ashy in a way and it's neutral. So if you're looking for something neutral, this one is a great place to start. I don't know, there's something about it that I don't, I'm not drawn into as much as the other palette. It's totally fine because eyeshadow is subjective. What you like is what you like. So 
I, and my job here is just to be straightforward with you, but there's no press glitter in here. However, there is that glitter infused matte formula that is extremely annoying to use because it goes everywhere and I don't, I haven't figured out, I don't want to do it yet. So, yep, there is that beautiful sparkler eyeshadow quad from Colourpop that I enjoy so much so so much look at the depth of this palette there's four shades you don't have to fuss with, with what look you're going for so creamy so blendable so pigmented and i really like it a segue to another brand this is the viseart uh, petite fours in praline this is kind of like a more dainty sister of this sparkler quad they work really beautiful together as you can see it's like a perfect palette but this one is much softer even the shimmer shades are like the traditional shimmers where this one is like metallic glimmering kind of color so they're very opposite but in a way they work perfectly together so both of these palettes I'm happy to get and the praline one I'm using only when I want a very natural look, you guys. If you have super deep skin tone, I don't think this one is the one for you, but this one is definitely is. Still, this one is a very neutral palette that I love for specific days, so I I don't know. I, I have to say I'm happy with both of these. My latest purchase from Natasha Denona is the Zendo eyeshadow palette. It is beautiful, it is colorful, and I'm glad to have one colorful palette in my collection, but I never reach for it after I review it, which is a bad thing. I shouldn't keep buying things that just for review and I don't use. So it's a beautiful palette. The quality is exceptional. There's definitely a learning curve for me because I'm not used to work with colorful colors at all. I kind of regret getting it, to be honest, but not for the quality or the color story. Everything else about this palette beside the versatility of it is beautiful. This is a brand new palette uh, in my collection. It's the Nude Gasm Face Palette by Charlotte Tilbury. I still have mixed feelings about this palette. I have had it for two and a half weeks now and I've been using it non-stop because I actually enjoy it. Um, I am slowly getting back into a more natural, even more natural look than what I'm used to. Like and non-makeup makeup looks and this is a perfect palette for it. Why? Because you have some very very natural shades. Um, the most intense color in here is probably the highlighter. It's the most impactful of the four. The blush is a very cute dainty blush. I wouldn't say it's intense at all and so is this lighter contour shade. It's great for nose contour and if you have lighter skin tone, this is going to be a great shade for you. This is a nice contour too. It's not super deep by any mean. So if you have medium or medium deep skin tone, you probably wouldn't find much use in this palette. Because of that, I kind of going back and forth on my feeling of this. But overall, I still really like the quality. And I'm glad I finally have a Charlotte Tilbury face palette. Another face palette that I have been loving Thing is this NARS Orgasm on the Beach Blush and Highlight Palette. Look at this color story. It is beautiful. It has everything you could ever ask for in the blush palette. If you have deep skin tone, this might not work as well, but for my skin tone specifically, like medium, this is perfect. And this is actually the first uh, blush or face products from NARS that I have. And they are more beautiful rather than intense at the beginning. Once again, similarly to Shell Tilbury, but I would say Shell Tilbury is even less intense from the beginning. This one is a step up with the pigmentation, extremely creamy. They're all kind of like half a sheen. So it's, there's no matte in here. They're all kind of glowy, but they're not intensely glowy like a highlighter. Only these two are highlighters. The rest of them are kind of like a satin finish, which is beautiful. The last palette I want to talk about is this Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. It's a beautiful palette, don't get me wrong. For some reason, I don't really reach for it um, as often enough. I find that the shimmer shades, especially one, two, and three, these three here, they kind of 
hard. They're not creamy, which is something that I don't really tend to reach for as much. It does have these two interesting cream shadows though, so that's why I'm glad I have it. Great range of neutrals in here that is very everyday friendly and you can turn it into a deeper glam if you want to. I want to use this more and I am still on the fence about this. This is not as big of a brand as like Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath or even Huda Beauty or Color pop so it's a more unique gift and the quality is still good enough yeah i just think it's a great gift palette all the shades complement each other and you will get a beautiful look regardless of which color you pick from because they're all within that neutral glam bronzy reddish family i'm going to keep using this and i need to use it more that's the thing it's really fun that I get to consolidate my feeling and share with you guys. I hope it's helpful. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope that you will be inspired to take out your palette collection and look through them and like something like this. This that you don't really use often and you kind of forgot about them. Take them out and use them instead of buying new palettes again and again and again and trying to keep up with the new releases. You sh there's certain things in your collection that might be forgotten and might be like barely touched like these in mine. So yeah, that's kind of the point of this video. I will let you go now. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in my next video. Until next time, please don't flop.